What's up guys? What's up? We are going to be talking about motorcycle first aid. And I've got my little, let's go ahead and move this here. If you guys are seeing this um, after the live stream, because what I'm doing is I'm doing a live stream right now. If you're seeing it after the live stream, uh, welcome. And we're going to be talking about motorcycle first aid. We're going to talk about ABCs, you know, the airway breathing, circulation. We're going to be talking about a few other things. And just double checking, making sure it's still recording. Yes, it is. And we're going to be talking about a few things. And I have a first aid kit with a tourniquet and a few other things. And I just want to show you guys all that. Got my notes right here. This is something I've wanted to do for a very long time. And I was going to be doing it on the... Uh, on the motorcycle, but since, look at this, there's just so much stuff here. There's so much stuff here that I, I just couldn't do it safely on the motorcycle. Um, I actually left my uh, first aid kit in my saddlebags. I keep that in my saddlebags, and we'll talk about that. My son's going to be bringing it to me right now. There you go. Go ahead and close the door. Thank you. And uh, we're going to be talking about this motorcycle first aid kit that I have here. So we're going to go and jump into that. Um, and so first of all, motorcycle first aid kits will only help you in minor accidents. I kind of want to, I just want to give you guys the honest opinion on that as a, as a ret uh, retired firefighter, as a fire person that's not doing it anymore, uh, 11 and a half years. And I'm going to tell you right now, the stuff even we did on scene wasn't the absolute, um, end all be all, uh, it wasn't life saving definitive. I mean, it was, it was, it did save lives, but here's the thing is that if they're that bad, if it's such a major accident, they're going to need surgery. So a lot of the times what we did was uh, we moved it into a surgical situation to where it's like we have to get them to the hospital. We can't mess around um, on scene and uh, do what we think is going to save their life. What really is going to save their life is surgery. So motorcycle first aid kits are really that's it. It's their first aid. It's, it's not definitive aid. That's what it's called. Um, so always call 911 after an accident. So if you witness an accident, if you see an accident, uh, if you're a part of an accident, call 911 first. Try your absolute best to call 911. Get people to the scene. You want to get them on the way, and then you can start working on what you need to do. Don't start doing your first aid stuff thinking, hey, first situation, I get to do some first aid stuff. This is awesome. You know, you know, this is the what I've been waiting for. I got this kit for this purpose. And then you start working on them and it spirals out of control and now you're SOL. I mean, you don't have uh, EMS on the way. You don't have people on the way that are needed. And so what you need to do is just call 911 first, tell them where you're at, get the uh, appropriate medical personnel on the way, then you can start your stuff, okay? So we're going to go ahead and talk real quick about ABCs. What's up, Connor? How you guys doing? What's up, Zach? What's up, the rad? How you doing? Uh, we're going to talk about ABCs. Now, this is kind of like the biggest thing. Uh, when it comes to EMS, emergency medical services. And the thing is with, with ABCs and what I'm telling you now is I'm not training you to be an EMT. I'm not training you to be a paramedic. What I'm doing is trying to give you an idea of what this first aid kit's going to do. Okay, so airway, ABCs, easy to remember, airway. And it's in the it's pretty much in the uh, order of importance. You might say circulation is up there, but airway. Okay, so if the airway is one of the most important things that you need to keep going. So if you can't breathe, you're dead, right? How long can you hold your breath? Is that is that quick enough for an ambulance to show up? No, it's not. So um, airway is very important. This includes everything that's involved with the lungs, the throat, and the mouth. So it's basically the whole system. Let's go ahead and block in the, the view counter. How are you guys doing? Um, yes, I agree. Com uh, compilations, I'll actually put that in here. Um, so you want to secure that. So if they have damage to their face, this is why I highly recommend a full face helmet is that if you have damage to your face, you compromise your airway by compromising your mouth, you compromising your throat. If you have a chest injury, you can compromise the chest. There's not much you can do about that. But what you can do with the mouth um, is, it's, it's hard to, I don't want to tell you guys to do something that you're not trained to do, but what you can do with the mouth is, um, is possibly use an OPA or MPA, but that's that's in here. Uh, there's really not much you can do. I don't want you sticking your fingers in the mouth because they could bite your fingers off accidentally, or you might cause something else. But definitely don't remove the helmet. That could be something huge. Uh, if you feel like they might be choking and they might be uh, like might be spitting up blood and they can't get you know because you have chipmunk teeth or chipmunk cheeks when it comes to the um, the helmet. Use what Showy has. I mean, they have like a little red tab. You can pull that off in emergencies, and that will allow the helmet to fall off easily. 
and uh, that might be something that you could definitely do when it comes to helping relieve the airway, but there's really not much you can do with a first aid kit. That's what I'm saying is that there's not much you can do with the first aid kit. So I don't want you to think that you, you know, you can't do much and that you're going to be solving everything's all the problems. You're not. Um, first aid kits for, it's really hard. It's really hard to explain, but you really need to get EMS there. Thank you, Brent, for the uh, super chat. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, man. That's awesome, guys. You know that, is? that is a super chat. That is a super chat. That is... <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Ah, cheers from New Zealand. Awesome. Uh, so the next is breathing. Okay, so breathing. If they stop breathing, you probably are going to have to start breathing for them. Now, breathing is uh, also very important. Now, the one of the cool things about one of uh, a quality first aid kit, which I have here, and I have that link in the description. It's the first link. It's the very first link in the description. I have it to this, and this is what it all came with. So you might have to breathe for them. Um, so CPR, learning how to do CPR is very important. And the cool thing about this is that it, it's kind of hard to see because you guys are obviously on a live stream. It's not a real picture. Um, for adult CPR, they actually give you what you need to do. They need you to check for dangers, check response, send for help, clear and open the airway, check for normal breathing, give 30 chest compressions at 100, minute, 100 per minute, followed by two rescue breaths, defib if you can, if you have an AED. So it even tells you what to do. So when I open up this packet, it gives me an antiseptic towelette, it gives me a one-way valve mask. Now this right here, you slide over their mouth. And since it's one way, when you breathe in, you're not gonna get exhaled breath out into your mouth. So don't worry about getting vomit on you. So it's something nice and tiny. It's perfect for a motorcycle because this is all you need. If you've ever seen those really big mouth cups, those are for, you know, if you have enough room, like a big bag. Obviously on a motorcycle, you're not gonna have a huge bag. So this is perfect size for what you need. And if you have to do it, if you don't want to breathe for them, just do compressions, to be quite honest. Just do compressions. Breathing is great and all, but you might not be able to do that. And it comes out in its own little pack, CPR kit, has a, has a ring on it, and you can actually attach it to like a belt loop. So it's pretty cool. And I'll be getting to comments uh, real soon. I'll be getting to comments real soon. So if you guys... Uh, have the comments or if you are also EMS um, I definitely would love to hear from you guys so I'm gonna put this back in so if you don't want to go mouth to mouth like I said just do compressions so circulation now this is the most visible one and this is what I call distracting injuries and a lot of EMS call distracting injuries is that if you see a lot of blood you're gonna be distracted by it um, you're gonna be like so focused on I must stop the blood flow I must stop the blood flow and you're not really thinking of, I need to breathe for this person. I need to breathe for this person. So that might be an issue. Um, well, let me go ahead and turn this. Let's see if that helps at all. So you might have to start breathing for that person. Uh, or not breathing for that person. But um, if you see blood, it might distract you a little bit. So that might be an issue for you. Um, you might be freaked out a little bit by the blood. You might be freaked out by a little of the things. Uh, you really need to make sure that you're not distracted by it. Because if they're not breathing, losing a lot of blood is not that big of a deal. And we got Luke with the Grom Squad. Hello from Wales. Keep up the cool vids, bud. Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. That is huge. Thank you. I love it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. See, it popped up right there. Awesome. Um, so blood is, is, is obviously a bad thing. You don't want to lose too much because you go into something called hypoperfusion, which is shock. It's the real shock. It's not the shock that you see in the videos or in movies and stuff like that. It's real shock. It's something where you don't have enough blood flow to uh, give nutrients and oxygen to all the bodily tissues that you need, like the heart, lungs, um, brain, liver, all those things, and then you die. Um, so bright red blood usually means arterial blood. Dark red blood is mostly venous blood, so that's the from the veins. Now, vein blood, the veins aren't under pressure, okay? So the veins aren't under pressure, so the blood won't be squirting out. If the blood is squirting out going crazy, that means it's arterial because every time the heart beats, you'll see it goes shoot. And I've seen that, and it's real. It's like you'll shoot out. So you really got to pay attention to that. Uh, so the only thing you really can do is apply pressure, elevate if you can, and apply wound dressing. So applying pressure is getting your hand, say I'm bleeding like pretty hard from here, I crashed my motorcycle or somebody crashed and, or whatever, I got a cut right here and it's bleeding out. It's either oozing out or it's squirting out. Apply pressure. So I'm grabbing hard. And when I say apply pressure, I mean you're holding it and squeezing it hard. You might have to just put it on the ground and push on it and don't let go. 
the moment you let go, it's gonna it's gonna bleed again. So what you're trying to do is is have the blood clots accumulate at the exit wound and stop it for itself. But you're gonna have to be that stop for a while. Uh, so you can apply pressure that way. Uh, you can also obviously get a t-shirt or something like that, um, elevate it above the heart if you possibly can. But one cool thing about these uh, first aid kits is they know that this, something like that's gonna happen. Okay, so what you have here is a wound closure sit or closure kit, and usually this has band-aids and stuff. But what you really want to have is conforming bandages and pressure bandages and cotton gauze pads. There we go. This is what I wanted. I wanted to cause cotton gauze pad. It's also good to get familiar with your own pack. So this right here is just a small little. It almost looks like a three by three piece of cotton and that's basically what a, a t-shirt is i mean a t-shirt's a big piece of cotton but this is sterile that's the cool thing is that this is sterile and then you got ipads and everything like that so really kit your stuff out to what you want it to be but you can grab one of these rip it open apply pressure and hold it there and then it will accumulate uh blood clots on the pack or on the uh on the gauze if it fills up with blood don't take it off just put another one on and if it keeps filling up with blood apply even more pressure. And that's where the pressure bandages come in hand because you don't want to be holding this the whole time. Now you ran out of a hand you can't use. Applying pressure to this is very important. That way you can use your hands for other things. That's what I really like about that. Hey, Boston, how you doing? All right, so now that you have the general overview of the main priorities, let's talk all the tools and stuff that we're gonna we're gonna need or need. So you're gonna need a little carrying case for all this stuff, and I talked about that in the first aid kit. By for, I'm using Survive Wear. It's one of the higher rated Amazon uh, kits. I like the fact that it's really tiny, has Molly attachments. With my built well backpack, I can attach this to the backpack. I can throw this into a saddlebag. It's it works out very well. What's up, Alan? How you doing? Sucking chest wounds. Oh, you're kind of almost out of luck on that one. But in here, uh, I don't think they have anything in here, but you need to have a piece of plastic, which you could use this three sided piece of plastic, tape it and then burp it if you have to. That's, that's above, that's above first aid. That's above first responder. Uh, so you need occlusive dressings, which um, is exactly what I was talking about right there. You're gonna probably need something like that. And you can actually just use the plastic. That's all it is. You need to use, you can use plastic. So all these things that come in plastic, like the iPad, the uh, the gauze swab pad, this right here you can use as an inclusive dressing. You basically just type or uh, tape it three sides. And what it means is when there's air coming out of a chest cavity, that right there will keep it uh, secure. And you just kind of burp it every once in a while. That is above and beyond what we're going to talk about here. Uh, so you're going to need four by fours or five by nines. You can find those in like Walgreens. You can find those at Walmart in the e or the first aid area. But the the got the cotton gauze right here. This this little three by three, two by two, is almost like a four by four. And you can get a bunch of those. You're going to need a bunch of those. Five by nines are basically like women's sterile pads. They can absorb a lot of blood. Or liquid so those are very good in case of a motorcycle accident where somebody's bleeding quite a bit and you're gonna need scissors and a tourniquet now I know a lot of people are saying don't use a tourniquet you know it's it's above people's skill level I'm gonna tell you what they give Marines these they give army people I know they're trained but they give random people these things all the time and it's it's almost idiot proof now they say don't do it but we have such a good healthcare system that either you're gonna die or you're going to do this and they can give you stuff that will prevent some adverse re adverse effects. So this is a tourniquet and this is this kit right here has a pair of trauma shears. Now these are different. These are different than regular shears. These are trauma shears. These can cut through pretty strong stuff. If you get bigger ones, you can obviously have more leverage. You can cut through seat belts, cut through le uh, leather, you can cut through a lot. And one little thing that I like to do uh, when I'm cutting clothes is I'll just make an, inc uh, an incision. I'll just grab the clothes and just rip it that way because it's a little bit faster than just cutting all the way through. So that's a little tip from me. So I'm going to put that back. And there you go. So you need to realize you're not going to be doing very much other than the very basic life support if it's needed. So getting EMTs and paramedics to the scene is very important. That is one of the things that you just have to do. You're not trained for this. We are trained for this. And if you're in a group, have somebody call 911. Okay, 
have somebody call and take care of those things. Like you literally point at somebody and say, you, you call 911. If you're in a group, you need to do that. Because if nobody says, hey, you call 911, nobody will call 911. Everyone will assume somebody else did it. So if you take the charge and you take the lead, you, you say you call 911 and then you start doing what you need to do to take care of the patient. So learning CPR is, is a very, very easy skill and it's highly recommended. Get CPR certified or even just watch a YouTube video and figure it out. There's plenty of news stories about kids going out and, and saving their little sister or saving their brother or saving a stranger. And they ask them, how did you learn how to do this? They're like, well, I watched TV. Just the fact that you're going to put it in action can save somebody's life. So that's something you're going to want to do. And if you're freaking out, just remember, try your absolute best, stay calm, and take care of, take care of their airway breathing circulation. So if they stop breathing, you're going to have to start breathing for them. If they're starting to choke, take care of their airway. Maybe you might have to pull out a tooth or a couple teeth um, away from their mouth and like dig them out, make, turn them off to the side, have them spit it out. That could be causing problems. If they're bleeding like very fast out of their leg, take care of that problem. If they ha don't have enough blood in their system, they're not going to be able to live. Their heart's not going to have enough fluid to pump around to the other parts of their body. So I have this right here. This is my first aid kit that I keep with me in my saddlebag. Uh, whenever I go go riding, um, I know how to use this because of what what I did. Um, and now this is something that I want you guys to kind of get interested in. I want you guys to be, you know, I talk about in the group riding video to have a set of tools so you can help somebody else out if, you know, their bike breaks down. But what happens if you're in a car accident or you have a friend that's in a car accident or a motorcycle accident or whatever and you don't have the tools for that? So I also agree and believe in having tools for the person, not just the bike. So having a kit like this is very, very important. So you get minor wound stuff, you get hypoallergenic tape. It comes with its own tourniquet in here. This is kind of like a little uh, cinching tourniquet. It's something very easy to slide there. Well, first of all, you can, you can just do this. It's harder to do it as one person, but you can just either slide it on or put it on. So I'm trying to do it with one hand. So this might be something that you're gonna have to practice too, because once if you're the person in the motorcycle accident, and you're and you can't take care of it so you want to put it all the way up and we can talk about this in another video and it's just a matter of cinching and you want to cinch it tight super tight so having something like this is very important very very important to have and this kit has everything so this kit has absolutely everything that i think you'll need i just decided to get a better tourniquet um, plus it's always good to have two because you do have four limbs and if multiple people got in an accident if you only have one tourniquet and you need and you need two, guess what? You're gonna have to choose who gets it or not. So this is a more uh, appropriate tourniquet. This is a real one. This is one that I was trained on so that I know how to use. So I decided to get one like this. These are okay. They will do the job. But what you can do with a tourniquet is if you put a bandage on somebody and you don't want to apply pressure to it and hold your hand there so you can be free to do other stuff, you know, like call 911 or take care of somebody else. You can put the bandage on and you can put the tourniquet on and not tighten it super tight, but tighten it enough to, to it's almost like having your hand there as a pressure. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up to, I know this was an 18 minute video now, I'm going to open this up to questions, I'm going to open this up to other things, but if you want to check out this exact kit, this exact kit that I have, go to the link in the description and it's the first, it's the absolute first link. So I'll actually post it in the chat. So this is the first aid kit that I'm looking at. So if you guys want to check that out, that's the first kit. Um, and then uh, right, the link right below it is the tourniquet. So this is just extra that I wanted to get. But having all this stuff is very important. I think I would swap out the iPads. So these, these are oval iPads. So in case of an eye injury, you can paste it over their eye. Um, I would probably take these out and put a bunch more 5x9s and 4x4s. But that's just me. A uh, triangular bandage is for creating a sling. That's its own skill. And a bunch of band-aids. It's weird. Yeah, uh, use a belt if need be to improvise. The thing you want to do is use something that has uh, it, that is thick. You don't want to use like a shoestring. You want to use something that's thick. That's why this is has a thick layer. And you want to put it uh, at least a, jo a joint above the injury site. If you're bleeding on your head, don't don't put it on your neck. That's a joke that firefighters use all the time, but it's 
It's, it's, you're not, don't do that. <laughs> so I'm actually going to put everything back the way it is. And that's the one thing I really like about this kit is that everything is labeled. Everything is labeled. You have tweezers, you have, what's this? This is splinter probes. You got pressure bandage, wound sprain, snake bites, skin cleaning wipes, cotton gauze, swabs, and iPads, wound closures. So, I mean, I'm going to put everything back. But what you can do, like I said, is just take it, all the stuff out and, and make your own kit. But what I really like about this kit is that it's tiny. And I can fit it in my saddlebag. And since everything is plastic wrapped, everything's in a Ziploc baggie, it's, it's pretty much water resistant. So it's very important. So I'm going to put this back in here. So just having things, just having tools, just having a motorcycle doesn't make you a pro at it. Having a first aid kit doesn't make you knowledgeable of how to use it. So that's something that you're going to want to do um, on your own. But learning CPR is probably going to be the easiest and best thing that you possibly could do. So when I put this all together, see even with the extra tourniquet in there, since I have two tourniquets, it's just a small little form factor package and it's, it's really nice. Um, so definitely give it a check or check it out. First aid kit, survivor wear, uh, the links in the description. I highly recommend it. So guys, you guys got any questions? Let me go ahead and start reading the comments. If you guys have any questions? Yeah. Stay calm at all times. It looks like we have a lot of, it looks like we have a lot of people here that are EMS or that no EMS. So Boston says, uh, best friend's dad died on a motorcycle ride. One trauma nurse, two EMTs riding with him. He was ejected from his bike and hit his head. Was stabilized, but transport took 40 minutes. See, that sucks. That means sometimes, um, like, there's nothing you can really do. There's something, there's sometimes you just can't do it. That's just, even if somebody crashes inside a hospital room, depending on the severity of the, the injury, there's not much you can do anyways. Uh, but what you don't want is to be riding somewhere and there's something that you can do and then you can't because you don't have the proper tools and you don't have the proper education and somebody dies. I'm not saying be an expert at absolutely everything that you do, but we as motorcyclists know that riding is inherently dangerous and that there's, op there's opportunities to crash. So that means there's opportunities to help save somebody's life. There's opportunities to prevent further injury. Um, and the whole goal is to prevent things the whole goal is to prevent, uh, prevent things with having proper safety gear, riding safe, knowing how to control your motorcycle very well. But there's sometimes there's just shit happens. And when that happens, uh, you want to be prepared. And having a first aid kit that is almost to the point where it's an EMS bag is very important. Um, but then you need training for that. And who knows? There might be somebody with training there. You don't have the training, but you have the bag. There was a situation where on the way up to Tucson from Yuma, when I went to go test for this local fire department here, I was just driving in my car um, and I was driving. And I saw two vehicles on the side of the road, obvious rollover accident. And I was one of the first ones to stop. I didn't have any tools. I had nothing, absolutely nothing. Somebody pulled up. They were uh, Border Patrol. He was on his way home from work. And he actually had an EMS bag. He had a, a bag that he would take with him on patrols and stuff. So it had EMS gear and it had oxygen tank and a few other things. And I had the higher level of care and the higher level of skill, uh, scope of practice basically, than he did. He was just a first responder, but he had the gear. And I was an EMT um, and I used his gear. I used his gear to treat the patients um, on scene and... See, that's what I'm saying is that if you have the gear, someone else might show up that doesn't, but they have the training and there you go. That's, that's where it's very important. Sore, sore lizard 74, yo, buying my first street bike. So I'm going to definitely be catching up on your, all your vids. Yeah, man. Good. What kind of bike are you going to get? What kind of bike? Right now I'm going to, I'm going to share, uh, guys, if, if you want other people in here, uh, share, the live stream with others share it on facebook share it uh on your instagram or wherever you want to share it right now i'm going to share it right now on my discord which is absolutely free they should be in here anyways 
Um, but I'm going to be sharing this on my Facebook. We are live. I just want to, where are you guys at? Where are you guys at? But yes, guys, you it's good to have the training, but it's also really good just to have the gear. I mean, you can have everybody with a ton of training. Nobody has the stuff. There's nothing you can do. Sometimes that's that's just the way it works. Let me go ahead and do this. We are live. There we go. Hopefully everybody got their notifications. We got 50 people in here. Let's see. MVA is not the best to attend. Much prefer structural fire any day. I agree, Brent. Uh, structure fires are very uh, physically taxing, but man, MVAs, they're like mentally taxing. I've seen some nasty ones. I've seen femurs sticking out of legs. I've seen scalpel removals uh, hitting, you know, hitting their head on the windshield. I think you know what I'm talking about. It cuts right there and it just kind of removes half their scalp and it's just flopping. You can see the bone. Seeing a, a, a skull is, is, is a weird feeling. You think it's like, like pure white, you know, you, like those skeletons you see. It's not. It's like this glossy pearl. <laughs> it's gross. Um, so genetic drip. This guy has helped me be a more confident on a bike. Thanks, Dan. Dan, definitely take mad uh, MSF course. There you go. Yes, definitely do that. And if you're more confident on a bike, you're gonna be safer. I think uh, you said you're a nurse, right? I think you said you're yet yeah, nurse here. So I mean, like, I bet you your first IV stick. Not very confident, right? You're very shaky, very nervous. Your hundredth IV stick, you can you can hit it blindfolded, right? You got those big old ropes so you can get that IV. So that's the same thing with motorcycle riding. First time on the bike, eh, a little nervous. Take the MSF course, get some training. Nothing. Also, uh, genetic drip. I have the MSF or not MSF. I have yeah, no, I have the MSF rider coach training this weekend, and then all next week. So I'll become an MSF rider coach. And then uh, I actually have a DDFM training manual. It's I call it the DDFM training manual because I'm putting it together. But it's a training manual to get you ready for the road and stuff that you can practice even as a more experienced rider. And it's all most of it's parking lot pro practice. Almost all of it's parking lot practice. So you should check it out. It's on my Patreon. Guys, that's uh, patreon.com slash Dan and the Fireman. I know it's not – my handwriting is terrible. And Nikki's going to make fun of me for it because she has way better handwriting and she'll make it look all pretty. Put it up real quick, but check out my Patreon. I have a training manual on there to help you become better riders. Um, just check it out. So, Sword Lizard Suzuki, G G G Suzuki GXR 600 1996, I'm pretty sure. It sounds badass, dude. Eric Hagen, practice, practice, practice. Yes, exactly. Wayne Perry, what kind of things do you need in a bike first aid kit, Dan? Um, I think at bare minimum. Remember, this is this kit right here is, is great. I It's pretty cheap uh, or inexpensive. It's pretty inexpensive. And I like it personally because it has a bunch of information. It even has a whistle just in case you get stranded. stranded you can uh, uh, use a whistle. But I like this because it has it's ripstop fabric. It has a ton of uh, uh, really nice stitching. It's got a lot of handles and really good zippers. But it... You can attach it to a Molly. Uh, if you don't know what Molly is, it's basically an attachment system that a lot of military use and backpacks and stuff like that. Um, but this comes in a nice little form factor. And all in all, you'll probably just need a one-way valve if you have to do CPR. Um, maybe a, a set of gloves if you don't want to get blood on your hands. And then a bunch of gauze and 4x4 and 5x9s and stuff like that. That's pretty much what you're going to want. But definitely check out the link in the description. Um, I'll go ahead and post it or yeah, paste it, copy and paste it in here again. Definitely check it out. That's the exact kit that I have. What's up, Emily? What's up, A and J? Decap decapitations are the worst. Yep. They are pretty bad. Yeah, I don't blow the whistle in the house. In an emergency situation, you're supposed to keep the helmet on right. Uh, overscore gaming for the most part yes 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 you want to keep the helmet on because there could be a cervical spine which is your neck uh, uh, injury um, and the helmet is basically you let you let us take or 
I keep saying us. I'm not a firefighter anymore. You let the EMS take care of that. Uh, that if you have to, if they are like choking, if it's choking them or if it's causing airway issues and you feel that the helmet t getting off will allow them to breathe, be breathe better, take it off with help. So have somebody help support the body while you take it off nice and neat. Now the showy helmets have these red tabs and a lot of newer helmets have these red tabs that are next to the cheek. Those are designed to have the helmet still be on. You can pull that red tab and what it does is it, it pulls out the cheek pads. That way the helmet just slides right off. Um, but for the most part, let EMS take care of that. Um, I wouldn't, um, or I would take it off because I feel like I'm trained enough for it after 11 and a half years. Um, for me telling you though, I would say don't. Um, my first call having BVRT and the person has legs severed and passed in minutes. Whoop. Yeah, blood loss is crazy. You can die quick. Skyros M. Hi, Dan. It's 12.28 a.m. in the EU. Hey, get to bed. Thanks for stopping by, though. He's got, an M or he's got a military. Oh, nice. Yeah, I wouldn't remove it. Blood clot stuff and tourniquet as well as Israeli compression bands. Yeah, that's good. You, you dig in the live sub, sub count? Yeah, me too. I really like this thing. This was a gift from uh, uh, my fiance, Nikki. And, uh, oh, see, like, I can change it to other things. It's pretty cool. But I like to have it on the YouTube. Um, Wayne Perry, you're welcome. Need to go to Raynan's at their live stream so we can talk. I got, I got stuff, dude stuff to do you guys got any questions you guys want to talk about any little thing here and there about the channel we got new videos coming up um i just want to say thank you once again to where where to go i want to say thank you to brent for the super chat and luke with grom squad for the super chat thank you guys um once again for supporting the channel by doing super chats uh if you guys want to help out the channel there's that little money sign or become a patron, guys. Uh, if you want to become a patron, right there, patreon.com slash Dan and the Fireman. That helps out the channel a lot. And uh, just sharing sharing the videos, honestly. Share the videos. They're, they're, they're really nice. Can you use the patron patch for your vest? Yeah, you can use it. You can use whatever you want, man. Use whatever you want. So if you want to check out the Patreon, it is right here. The training book, uh, it's for patrons. Um, so there, there's the link right there. It's for $5 patrons and more. There's, let's see, I'm going to go on the website. This is ddfmcrew.com. So here's, here's the, here's the website, here's the website to, the training manual right there ddfmcrew.com it's going to give you all the information you're going to need to to join and to get the password because it's password protected i have a lot of parking lot practice type stuff so i'm going to click it i have one two three six seven and I actually have an eighth one coming up i just finished it i just posted it for patrons um on patreon it's the eighth one that i have and it's one of my favorite ones and i use the drone to videotape pretty much the whole thing so it's going to be, it's really nice. So we talk about friction zone, slalom, turn from a stop, proper body positioning, figure eight practice, U-turn. So this is uh, just a quick little intro to it. I got my laptop right here because I have notes. So right here we have, this is part of the DDFM training manual. So we have a, an example video. What is up, patrons? You guys ready to do some uh, U-turn stuff? All right. So now if you don't have cones, cut a tennis ball in half. So we... I talk about how to set it all up, and then down here, I actually show you how to set it up. I give you the dimensions, I tell you what to use and how to do it, I give you some tips, and then you can switch on over to any other training system or any other thing that you want to do, and it works. So road riding techniques, we got this one over here. So starting on a hill is one of them. Um, we're going to get some at-home training real soon, but motorcycle controls should be popping up. Nope, should be there. But we got DFM crew members. So if you are a $5 uh, member or, or higher, send me your picture and I'll put you on the wall of uh, wall of fame right here. So we got a whole bunch already. So if you want to check that out, please click that link.
it must be 10 years ago. Yeah, it's always, you'll if you don't use it, you'll lose it. And you'll start putting um, other information in your head. So my goal is to not lose the the, the information that I have and that as a firefighter, as an EMT uh, basic. I don't want to lose that. So the goal is to go ahead and do um, more training, more training, refresh myself, refresh myself and everything. So Boston, we need to go for a ride together. We've had breakfast, but not a ride. I know that was such a long time ago, dude. I haven't heard from you in a while. That was a long time ago. Uh, ride safe, Mark. Ride safe, man. You guys have any questions about motorcycle first aid? I'll be streaming for another 15 minutes. Um, if you want, we can talk about you know some of the videos that are coming up or some of the other videos that just happened, like the group riding. We can talk about you know common mistakes and everything. Uh, have I discussed braking procedures? No, not yet. I'm um, going to wait for the class to f to finish this week, and I'll be talking about braking procedures so I can have a little more information. I have a good idea of how to do it. I just don't have a great idea of how to teach it. So I'm going to learn how to teach it a little bit better before I decide to make a video on the subject. But um, I, I understand the braking principles. I just want to be able to um, deliver it to you better. Uh, but I know Moto Jitsu has a very good video on it. And he's at the point where he can teach you uh, at a, an appropriate level. So you might want to check his video out. Uh, he does one on emergency braking and stopping fast and how to s stop normal and all that stuff. So he has a bunch of videos like that. So definitely check out Moto Jitsu. But if you want to have the same uh, first aid kit that I have here, right here, this first aid kit, definitely check out that link uh, right there. And I kind of went over everything, but everything is, uh, let's see, everything is labeled everything in here, everything you're going to need. So what you really do need is a resuscitation mask and CPR kit, uh, some trauma shears, um, and a bunch of uh, four by fours and five by nines. And the cool thing about this kit is that everything is labeled perfect. It gives you exactly what you need to do for adult CPR. So it's pretty neat. I like it. I keep it in my saddlebags and I don't really mess around too much with it. I make sure that everything's not expired basically. And Ronald Russin, yeah, uh, honestly, tampons were designed for puncture wounds. They were designed for bullet holes. That's what they were designed for. And they work. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. You can bring a few of them yourself, honestly. Put a few of them in there. Uh, if you get a puncture wound, which commonly does happen with like a brake lever or a clutch lever, it can go through you. And if you have a puncture wound, one of the best things you can do is pretend this is a, a tampon or a feminine hygiene product, whatever you want to call it. And you, and you use it, and you put it in there, it will expand and uh, close off the wound. Oh, we got another subscriber. Awesome. Great topic. Is X, uh, X Firefighter now cop done first aid every year since 1991. Phil, how does it feel to be a firefighter now a cop? <laughs> I got a Kawasaki three, Ninja 300 in November, but I'm in Oregon, and the basic course in Team Oregon isn't until the beginning of February. Best thing you could do is uh, get some of the ideas because you are going to be doing um, some classroom work. And so another thing, one thing you can do is get some information from online. So one of my, my videos are, are I want to say my videos are really good. that will prepare you for the Oregon one, but I'm unsure what the Oregon one dictates and needs. I know for Arizona, my stuff's pretty good. Uh, in case there are any other UK riders watching, Grimbeard says, there are biker down courses available in some areas. Google should help you find one or similar course near you. I heard about those, Grimbeard, and I highly recommend you guys do that too. So thank you, Grimbeard. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy and paste that back into the chat because I think that's important. There you go. I highly recommend what he just said. If you are in the UK, do that. Yeah, look into it and I'm sure uh, it, it will help you out with insurance rates. I'm sure it'll help you out in a few areas when it comes to that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good idea. They have a few things kind of like that here. Um, but not really. They kind of expect, you know, to do your own thing and figure it out yourself. And 
that's kind of why I made this. I wanted to make this video is because I think that there's not enough out there. And I think a lot of it's liability. So I'm going to be telling you guys this right now that if you go out and try to help somebody, there are some laws that will protect you, like the Good Samaritan law. Um, if you're trying to do something in the best efforts to help somebody, you'll be protected. If you go in there um, and doing stuff that you know that you don't know what you're doing and you just start trying, then uh, you're, you're always open to everything. You're always open to stuff. And uh, honestly, I'd rather uh, get in trouble for trying to help somebody than sit back and watch that person die. That's how I look at it. Um, Harry Mullen, I have to thank you. Yes, I do. Between you and Moto Jitsu, you lead me to this feed. You are both great teachers. And how's Nikki's writing come along? Once again, thank you. She hasn't been she hasn't been writing. Um, and it's just because we've we've been so like December is so crazy, obviously because of kids and family. Um, she just hasn't been able to ride, and it's been so cold. She doesn't do well in the cold, so I need to get her some proper uh, cold weather gear. And then on top of that, this month is just so busy. I'm going to be gone for 12 days in Phoenix because of a uh, MSF rider coach training. And then I'm going to be, I mean, we're getting a house. We got, we're get, we got engaged. We're going to get married. So I mean, there's just like so much stuff. Like some of that stuff will just go on the back burner for now. But once we get into the good, a uh, good rhythm again, um, definitely going to be start doing it again. And, and then by that time I will be an MSF rider coach. So I'll be able to train her a little bit better. Um, or hopefully a lot better. Hopefully I'm so far below what I need to be that this class will knock me up a huge level. And that'd be great to transfer that knowledge to you guys and transfer it to, to Nikki. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So thanks. Uh, thanks for the comment, Harry. Thanks for the question. So those are the kind of questions I like to hear. In uh, Tidris 1 in Wales, there is a FBOS first bike on scene course offered free of charge by local authorities and fire service. That is awesome. That is very good. That's very good. Uh, if you're there, take one of those. And if it's free, that's even better. So definitely try that out. Check it out and uh, get some get some uh, information that you might need to save somebody's life. And uh, But if you're here locally, or not locally, if you're here in the United States or even over there, let's say you want to get uh, a first aid kit or anything like that. Right here. This is the one I'm using. This is the one I recommend. And on Amazon, there's, let's see, there's like, I don't know how many reviews on it. There's so, it's like a five-star um, product. Let's see. How many, how many, 1,280 customer reviews, five-star product, number one in best seller in boat safety first aid kit. So, I mean, boat safety, whatever, they want to have the smallest compact, lightweight stuff. And I figured this would be great for a motorcycle. So, uh, over here, it's thirty-four ninety-five American. I don't know what it's going to be anywhere else, but I have Amazon Prime, and I get free one-day delivery. And I, it says I purchased this item on September thirteenth, two thousand eighteen. So I mean, I've got it for a while. I got it. I got it a while ago. Um, so it's an FDA-approved medical kit, and I highly recommend it. Um, I went and got it because of the ratings. I went and got it because it is a bestseller and because it came with the stuff that I felt like it needed to come with. I just decided to get an, like an extra tourniquet. And this is like a really high quality tourniquet. So that's that's what I did. So if you want to check out that first aid kit, definitely check it out. Yeah, MC Rider is another person that you want to uh, have a source for learning. MC Rider's um very good very knowledgeable and he's he's been doing this for a while now like a long while so he's somebody that you're gonna want to uh watch and he has some good content very good content he's got like a hundred and how many like a hundred something 130 thousand subscribers or something like that it's ridiculous that's crazy i want a play button <laughs> i want a silver play button at a hundred thousand yeah um that'd be that'd be nice that'd be nice <laughs> Uh, but guys, um, about 10 more minutes, I'm going to be live streaming so I can get back and I can eat some, eat some dinner and all that stuff. But, uh, definitely take a look at some of the other videos I have. I do talk about, um, motorcycle first aid and I do talk about what to do when you're first on scene. I will go ahead and I'm going to find that video. I'm going to go ahead and find that video because it's, it's easier for me just to find it on my own without telling you guys to look for it. I've done a few videos on first aid. Usually those videos get taken down or they get demonetized 
because it has, you know, gross stuff. You know, it has, you know, it's talking about injuries. So YouTube doesn't like to put ads on it. So if you want to help support the channel, patreon.com slash Dan and Farman. So let's see, uh, accident. Let me find it. Let me find you guys the video. What to do if, yeah, see this one's demonetized, so it doesn't get any ads on it. This was back in 2007, or 2017, sorry about that. And I'm gonna go ahead and share this video with you guys. I'll go ahead and put it in uh, the chat. And that is what to do if you witness a motorcycle accident. That is something, I mean, I've wanted to make these videos for the longest time. I mean, I made that video back in 2017 and I really only made a f four videos kind of like that. I talk about motorcycle injuries and I talk about road rash. I talk about um, motorcycle mistakes, all those things. And they just don't get any money because they're demonetized. So I can only make them a few times here and there. So I just want to say thank you to uh, Brent and... Brent and Luke for the super chats because you basically just made it to where this video will offset if I get demonetized. Motorcycle equals donor cycle. And that, Jeff, that's another thing is I, I became a uh, organ donor the day I uh, decided to buy a motorcycle. I went and went to the organ donor um, sign up, uh, Arizona organ donor or something like that. I'm, and my, I'm in the database. And uh, I signed up for it, and I have it on my license. So that's that's what I do now. I became uh, Linda. I became a patron after I saw your last live chat. I completely support you, and a select few other sources. You guys are legit. Thank you, Linda. And I remember, I remember uh, your last name. I remember that name right there. Appreciate it. She's gonna need a new bike and new gear. Well, she's got a new bike. She's still got a new bike. New gear, definitely. I would love to get her new gear. Yours doesn't show up? Um, so my on, on our license, it should be like a heart. So on the bottom right of the license, or on the bottom of the license, it should have like a heart. Uh, the guy at DMV told me when I was getting my MC license, I should be an organ donor because right, riding a bike made me... Yeah, um, definitely become... A genetic drip, definitely become an organ donor. Honestly, become an organ donor even if you don't ride. I mean, what are you gonna do with, with your organs? Are you gonna take them with you? No. Let let if if you get in a crash or something happens that's not even motorcycle related and they're able to harvest, let's say, your lungs, maybe those lungs will go to a kid with cystic fibrosis, you know? You just save their life. Why not? Right? Why not? Um Autumn Wangden, that's horrible. YouTube should change their policy on that. First aid is important. Yeah, and that and that's crazy is that when I talk about this um, and I say, hey, you know, we're talking about motorcycle injuries, possibly if I say the word decapitation, there could be a chance that this the algorithm will catch that phrase and demonetize this. So when you talk about injuries like that, the computer system automatically tags it. Um but since I'm at such a higher level, I have 70,000 subscribers. I think once you hit 20,000, you get a case manager. So I can email her or him and possibly get a review s situated. But sometimes it just doesn't work. And I just don't get paid for that video. And that sucks because this is my job now. So the best way to kind of offset that, um, Autumn, uh, is Patreon. Patreon, um, I get paid out. Um, and 90%. Here's the thing is Patreon gives me 90% um, of every dollar. So nine cents of every 10 or 90 cents of every dollar goes to me. They only take 5% and then they charge 5% for uh, processing fees. So I get, I get the whole thing basically. And YouTube takes uh 40%. So um, I, that right there pretty much offsets everything. Same thing with super chats. Those help out too. Or, or just straight donations through PayPal. I have that too. That's on the streamlabs.com slash Dan and the Fireman. Right there. Right here. That right there will actually support me even more because that goes directly to me right now. 
So Linda, my daughter is a new writer and I made sure that she watches your channel. When she starts working, she will become a Patreon also. Awesome. Linda, um, depending on your tier, I, I don't want to check it right now. I don't want to be like telling everybody your tier. Um, you have access to the DDFM training manual if you're at the right tier. And that is parking lot practice. So you don't have, there's nothing high speed. It's all within a parking lot. It's all within like a 50 by 50 uh, foot section or, or 100 foot by 100 foot section. And you can do a lot of stuff. You don't need any gear other than your motorcycle and obviously protective gear. You don't need like cones or anything like that on a lot of these things. Uh, Grimbeard, I read a medical paper once on testicular injuries and frontal motorcycle accidents. Bet YouTube would demonetize video on that. They did. I did a video on that. I did a video. Here's the. I'm going to go ahead and find the video. I did a video on something very similar. I talked about open book fractures, which is when your pelvis in the front opens because when you crash in a frontal accident, you go up and over. Um, or you go straight in and that right there will give you testicular injuries, genital injuries, and it will cause your pelvis to possibly break open. It's one of the most common, uh, frontal impact injuries that nobody talks about when it comes to motorcycling. There's no protection you can, you can do for that, that I found. And when I did a video on it, I got demonetized. So, I mean, I, I want to talk about it. I just can't. So let me, um, common, let's do pelvic I did a video on that and the reason why I did a video on that is because my buddy Matt had that issue when he got in a car accident he had an open book fracture of his pelvis I did the research um, on it and I just wanted to kind of figure out you know what's gonna happen to my my best friend so I did as much as I could and then I decided you know what I'm gonna share it with everybody else so it's still demonetized I made it January 1st 2018 so I made it a year and a week ago, so 53 weeks ago, and it's demonetized. It's got 4,500 views. So that right there, that video right there is that I just shared is the one where I talk about the most common and overlooked motorcycle crash injury. The most frequent cause of pelvic injuries in crashed motorcyclists was due to contact with motorcycle fuel tank during the crash. Um, I even ha I still have the link there for Matt's GoFundMe. Because he got, he got tore up. So yeah, uh, if you want to know why I made that video, it's because of this right here. The GoFundMe right there. It gives you a little bit more information on that. Auden, just, you're going to become a patron? Dude. Dude, that'd be awesome. I'd love to have you around. Uh, if you're a $5 patron or more, you have access to the DDFM crew manual, and that will help you out uh, with practice. It will kind of give you a guideline of what you should do when it comes to practicing. Um, but check out all the perks. Check out all the things. Um, this right here is another link. This is the Patreon link, so if you want to check that out. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember that, Jeremy. He told me that. Ah. Chainmail is more comical than practical. Yes. Chainmail. Chainmail is not going to help you in a motorcycle accident. Maybe it will. I don't know. I wouldn't do it. Yes, I do have access. I bought 70 cheap plastic cones on Wish. Nice. I'm going to get a small group of lady riders together to practice. Awesome, Linda. We actually have a group of lady riders on the Discord, and the Discord's absolutely free. Are you on Discord? And since you are a patron, uh, you get access to a whole bunch of stuff. We have a lady rider group called the Biker Babes. And it's just a bunch of ladies in there. And uh, it would be great to have you there. Nikki's in there too. Um, let's see. Wayne Perry. Thanks, Dan, for all your useful videos. Watch so many now. I'm a fully trained first aider. I'd done first aid on my job after my friend died. I didn't know first aid at the time, and I was first on scene. So I'm glad you are doing it now. I'm sorry about your friend, dude. I'm sorry about your friend, but uh, it does light a fire in your ass when your best friend or your best bud or family member gets hurt or injured or dies. Uh, it does light a fire under your ass. That's why I changed my helmet. Um, it's why I decided to focus way more on safety than just kind of doing safety on the side for my videos. It's one of the reasons why I highly focus on safety after Matt um, got injured. 
Uh, here, Mooks. Hi, everyone. Just joining you for some quick tips on here as a new rider. I have a little storage space on my bike, FC09, usually with a backpack passenger bag. What are your must-haves? So this right here, this right here, uh, I have a first aid kit. Um, the first 18 minutes of this video, which it'll go up after this live stream is done, um, I talk about what's inside, what you need. So long story short, get this first aid kit. The link's in the description. It's the first link in the description. Get it. And then if you want to add more to it, great. But this is a little tiny thing. This is tiny. This is tiny. But here's my hand. I have tiny hands. And I can put my hand around it. Um, what you're going to need is you're going to need some scissors, uh, some trauma shears. They come, this comes with trauma shears. You're going to want a one-way valve mask. This comes with one. Uh, it comes with some uh, compression bandage. And it comes with a bunch of other stuff like band-aids and stuff like that. So what you might want to add to this specifically is probably four by fours, uh, maybe eight of them, and then a, like three or four or five by nines. And when you uh, go to Amazon and you search that, you'll see what I mean by those. So that's what I would do. I would do this. Um, I understand the desire to donate. I will not do that to, to my daughter. My reason my wife passed at the age of 49 to ask if we'd be willing to donate earlier that week while she was in the ICU. Autumn, what, done? Did you? Did you become a patron, bro? Oh, snap. Thank you, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That means a lot. It all adds up. It all adds up. This is awesome. We are at, how many patrons are we at now? We are at 202 patrons, guys. We're at 202 patrons. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah there's a ton of perks um if you're a, you have access to the ddfm crew manual you get a ton of perks uh, one of them is if you send me a picture um whatever picture you want it could be a picture of your motorcycle it'd be a picture of you i'll put you on the ddfm crew uh website so if you ever leave if you ever decide not to become a patron anymore that picture will stay up there because you supported me so thank you uh, Luke with Ground Squad. I switched from a Bell Bullet TT. Remember my old Bell Bullet? Big old visor, small little chin. Uh, really cool retro helmet. I liked it. It was ECE rated. Um, it, it caused a little bit of issues with my head. I, I didn't have the right head for it. I switched to a Shoei Hornet X2. And the Shoei Hornet X2 is a really great helmet. It's so comfortable. Snell rated. Bigger chin guard. It's just overall I think is a better helmet safer helmet so that's why i switched to it i literally bought it like uh two weeks after um two or three weeks after he got in his wreck like i immediately switched because he was wearing a full he was wearing the bell bullet when he crashed so i decided to just get a different one people i dealt with made it so miserable for me they were calling within minutes of her passing asking all sorts of things that my mind was not ready i'm sorry dude i'm sorry harry that's that's rough does first kit first aid kit have a Sam splint? I haven't checked it out yet. I would add one if not thoughts. Um, I you Linda, uh, if you are EM, EMS trained, I would add one. I would add one. I personally don't have one because I mean it wouldn't fit. It wouldn't fit in here. Um, and then on top of that, you're gonna need more gauze. You're gonna need more uh, materials, and that's for a broken. Uh, if you guys don't know what a Sam splint is, it's basically a, a, a rolled out thing that you can mold to a limb that you can you know strap to so it's a splint it's a moldable splint and i have one actually i have one i have i keep it in my camping gear just in case um but at, at that point it's just better to leave the person on the ground um stabilize uh, against the earth you know if they're laying down just stabilize it against the ground make sure they're not moving um there's not much you really can do uh, i i i would if you were trained I wouldn't if you weren't. And if you have the room, do it. Sam splits aren't, they're, they're pretty pretty bulky. Yeah, uh, Luke, yeah, I got the Shoei Hornet X2. It's a great helmet. But guys, um, we got one more minute left. I just want to say thank you to my patrons for making it to where every single one of my first aid like talks, every single one of my first aid videos, got get, they get demonetized. Okay, so they don't, they don't make any money. Um, there is a, an incentive to make them because I want you guys to be safe, but I just can't make them all the time because if I make them all the time, I don't make any money. Therefore, I can't do this. So my guys on Patreon, my guys and gals on patreon.com slash dandanthefireman, they make it possible to where if I make a video on first aid, 
I don't care if YouTube doesn't pay me because I'm getting funded by you guys. You guys are funding this channel. So I just want to say thank you, Linda. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Um, gosh, where are you at? Where are you at? Where are you at? Where, where'd it go? It disappeared. Thank you, Grimbeard. You just signed up. Thank you, Grimbeard, for signing up. Thank you, Auden, for signing up on Patreon. Guys, it's only a dollar a month. I have 70,831 subscribers. I don't expect all 70,000 to sign up for a dollar a month. If you guys did, I'd be rich. <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't care what YouTube did to me. I'd be making these videos and you guys would be directly funding, but obviously not 70,000 people will subscribe or uh, sign up. But even if just 1% of you guys signed up on Patreon, I'd be set to where I can travel the country, I can go meet you guys in person, I can go to Canada, go to Mexico, wherever it is, travel and uh teach you guys in person and talk to you guys in person or, or just hang out that's what i would like to do uh, but there's a lot of perks you get on patreon but uh, without getting on a rant thank you guys thank you my to my patrons for making this video possible i'm going to see if it gets demonetized um when it goes live later on today but with that said i just want to say thank you thank you thank you for helping me out uh how do you sign up for patreon there's a link in the description um I'll go ahead and post it. One sec. I'll post it right here. It's just patreon.com slash Dan and the Fireman. Like I said, I need to do a better job at making that, but I made it real quick. So here's the Patreon. So right there, it, it literally says support DDFM. So supporting me, supporting the channel. And those are all the perks that you get. It'd be great. It'd be great to have you guys. But I'm going to go ahead and head out. It's been one hour. I'm going to go ahead and I got two videos that I just finished uh, editing and uploading. So those videos are going up. DDFM Training Manual is getting a brand new video today. So I can't wait for you guys to see it. But that said, I'm going to be going to eat. <laughs> oh, also, this is a t-shirt. Dana and the Fireman t-shirt. 15 bucks on Amazon. Free shipping if you have Prime. That's all I wear now. I make my own t-shirts. I don't, I, don't I don't wear anybody else's. If you want to see that, uh, just go to Amazon, search for Dan and the Fireman, you'll find it. All right, guys, I'm going to head out. You guys, you guys have a good rest of your day. Thank you, Emily. I like seeing you here. I like I like seeing people, the old school uh, you, uh, DFM members here. But I'm going to be heading out, guys. I'll be seeing you later.